I'm Lauren Fairweather and I am super passionate about making craft tutorials. Today I'm going to show you how to make a really cute handmade gift using one of Simplicity's patterns. I love that crafts make such thoughtful gifts. Whoever you give them to will know right away that you put time and effort into it just for them. Simplicity patterns are great because they provide all of the necessary content. Pattern pieces that fit together, a list of all the materials and supplies you'll need, and easy step-by-step -step instructions. Because of that, I am super excited that Simplicity sent me these wonderful supplies to make such an adorable gift. I've chosen this wonderful stuffed fox and I'm going to walk you through the whole process. So whether you're on the hunt for something handmade to give as a present this holiday, or you already have this pattern and you just need a little guidance, I'm here to help. Personally, I think this fox would make a perfect gift. I know because I'm pretty tempted to just keep it for myself. I'd be pretty happy if someone made one for me. As someone who's made thousands of plush toys, as soon as I saw this little fox pattern, I couldn't resist trying it out. And Simplicity's pattern makes it super easy to do, so why not, right? This pattern is number 1081, and as you can see, there are four different animals to choose from, all in this one pattern. They're called the Funky Friends Factory, and there's a bear, a rabbit, a raccoon, and the fox, which is the one I picked. There are even a bunch of patterns in here for the little clothes they can wear. And if you look at the top of the guide sheet, there's a customer service number that you can always call if you get a little turned around and need someone to walk you through it. Mine turned out looking like this. And as you can see here, my fox is wearing a little scarf, which I designed to give him a little extra holiday cheer. If you want to learn how to make one of these snowflake scarves yourself, check out the video tutorial I made over on my channel after you finish making the fox here. In addition to Simplicity Pattern 1081, which you can find at simplicity.com or in retail stores, the supplies I'll be using to make our new friend are cotton fabric for the fox's body and a coordinating cotton fabric for his ears, black and white felt remnants, paper-backed fusible web, embroidery floss in black and an embroidery needle, a washable fabric marking pen or pencil, polyester fiber fill, I'm using these Martha Stewart all-purpose scissors for most of the cutting, and the Martha Stewart precision scissors for cutting smaller details, sewing pins, sewing thread in colors to match your fabric and some bobbins, an iron and ironing board, a wooden stick of some sort to help you turn your piece right side out, and I'll be using my Simplicity sewing machine to stitch up our lovely little fox securely. To start, open up your pattern and check the guide sheet to see exactly which pieces you'll need to make the fox. Cut out those pattern pieces on the solid lines until you have them all ready to go. To get rid of any folds and help your patterns to lie flat, quickly iron them. Following your guide sheet so you know where to place your patterns on the fabric, flip your cotton fabrics so they're folded in half with right sides together. Pin the fox's body shape facing the direction marked on the guide sheet and carefully cut through both layers of fabric around the solid lines of the pattern. Do the same for the fox's ears, except for this shape you'll need two pairs. Make sure that you're lining up the arrows on the pattern with the arrows on the guide sheet. Now you should have two body pieces with right sides facing in and two sets of ear pieces with right sides facing in. Before cutting out the applique pieces, we'll need to iron the paperback fusible webbing onto the felt. Cut pieces of fusible webbing to fit the 4 by 8 inch white felt remnant and the 2 by 2 inch black felt remnant. Make sure that the adhesive side is facing the felt and iron the fusible webbing to the felt following the package instructions. Then cut out two eyes and a nose shape on the black felt. To cut out the face shape, I found it easier to trace the pattern onto the paper side of the fusible web before cutting that pattern out of the white felt. Once we have all of our pieces ready to go, we can start attaching the face applique to the right side of one of the fox's body pieces. Peel the paper backing off of the face and nose pieces, then using the pattern as a guide, place the face and nose applique's adhesive side down onto the front of the fox's body shape. I used a few sewing pins to hold the applique in place, then removed them one at a time while I ironed the whole thing to set the adhesive. Follow the same steps to fuse the eye pieces onto the face. Then, switching over to our sewing machines, stitch all of those pieces down to secure them. I tried to get as close to the outer edges of each piece as I could, sewing around the face, then each eye and the nose. Remember to back stitch a little at the beginning and end of each piece to keep the stitches from coming undone, and switch your thread colors to match the felt colors as you go. Especially for the smaller pieces, I found it helpful to just go really slowly here, raising the presser foot to help me turn the piece whenever I needed to. 
When you're done, trim the threads sticking out on the front. Then, using the broken lines on the face pattern as a guide, draw the mouth on with a washable fabric marking pen or pencil. Cut a length of embroidery floss, thread it onto a needle, and tie a knot at the end. Now we're going to back stitch over the lines we drew. Push your needle up from the back one stitch length away from the bottom tip of the nose. Then push your needle back down through the fabric right at the tip of the nose. Continue this pattern, pushing your needle up from the back one stitch length away from your last stitch, then back down right up against the last stitch you made so you create a solid line of stitching with no gaps in between, backing into your previous stitch each time. Keep going until all of your ink lines are covered with lovely embroidered stitches. To secure them, flip the whole piece over and grab a nearby stitch with your needle. Then, as you're pulling it through, thread your needle through the loop that forms to make a knot. Trim your excess embroidery floss and we can start putting together the ears. With right sides together, follow both your guide sheet and the pattern in order to sew the ears together. You'll need to leave the edge with the large and small dots on it open, so I marked that side with a sewing pin before I started. Sew with a quarter inch seam allowance, up one side into the corner, stop and turn your piece, then sew down the other side. Repeat that for the other ear, remembering to do a few backward stitches where you start and finish to lock the stitches in. Following the diagram on your guide sheet, clip notches into the corners and seams with your detail scissors, being careful not to cut into the stitching, then turn the ears right side out. Use a wooden stick or a similar tool to push the corners out. Press with an iron to flatten them. Now we're going to attach the ears to the front piece of the fox's body shape. Again, check the diagram in your guide sheet to see how to line these pieces up. There's a large dot and a small dot on both the ear pattern and the guide sheet to show you exactly what the ears should look like. Pin them in place once you're confident that they're facing the correct direction. Grab the remaining piece of fabric, which should be the back side of your fox's body shape, and place it right side down onto the other pieces. That way the ears will be sandwiched between both body pieces and they'll be sewn into the seams as you sew around the outside edges. Pin all of the pieces together, making sure that the ears are still where you placed them before. I actually moved the pins holding the ears down onto the top piece here so I wouldn't stab myself with them later when I turn the piece right side out. Keep in mind that we'll need to leave a gap in the stitching on the side of one leg right here where it's marked on the guide sheet, and let's head back to our sewing machines. So since I'm planning to leave a gap right here, I'm starting my stitches at one end of that gap. Carefully sew around the whole shape, pulling out any nearby pins and leaving a quarter inch seam allowance, which for me means aiming to line up the left side of the presser foot with the edge of the fabric as I go. The dashed lines on the pattern show that many of the corners on this fox are actually rounded, so I found it helpful to keep the pattern nearby so I could occasionally check to see where I'm supposed to be stitching. There's another similar curve where the fox's head meets his body. When you get up to the top of the head, double check to make sure that the ear pieces haven't shifted so they'll be caught in the seam once you sew over them. Work your way all the way around the shape and once you finish the last little arm, remember to stop so you leave a gap for turning the plush right side out and stuffing it. Go around the seams, clipping the corners and curves. There's a diagram showing you where to do this on the guide sheet. Then turn the whole shape right side out. I would recommend leaving a larger gap than I did because I had a bit of trouble with this step. Use the wooden stick to help you push out the little limbs and corners, and if you need to, iron the whole piece to get rid of wrinkles if you have any. Now stuff the piece using polyester fiber fill. Make sure that it reaches into all of the corners and limbs and keep stuffing until you're happy with the way it looks. Pin the gap shut and all that's left to do is stitch the opening closed. We'll be using some matching sewing thread, a needle, and a ladder stitch to do this. Ladder stitch is a relatively invisible stitch where you push your needle under the crease on one side of the gap, then switch over to make the same stitch over on the other side. Picture the rungs of a ladder as you reach across the gap and continue that pattern until you've stitched the whole opening closed. Tie a knot or two onto a stitch near the end to secure your stitching, then hide your excess thread by pushing your needle into the toy and back out about an inch away. Trim off the thread that sticks out, remove your pin, and now our fox is all finished! 
I love his cute little ears, the stitching on his face, and the fact that you can choose whichever fabric you'd like to make him. Mine has these tiny polka dots. You can give him away just like this, or add an accessory like the little snowflake scarf I made, which you can learn how to make over on my own channel. This has been such a fun project, and I really love how the finished fox came out. Thanks for sponsoring me on this one, Simplicity. It's really put me in the holiday spirit. And now I'm off to make another, because I don't think I'm going to be able to part with this one. Thanks for watching, happy holidays, and I'll see you soon.